following program is Have Gun, Will Travel for broadcast December 7th, 1958. I promised I'd avoid a gunfight if possible. But it looks as though it isn't possible. I have one bullet left. You may draw when you're ready. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of the man called Paladin. <laughs> Go on, Mr. Paladin. Well, at 7 o'clock, we could have champagne in the lounge. Mm -hmm. At 8 o'clock, dinner at the Peacock, something special. Oh, I'm intrigued, Mr. Paladin. And uh, then? A uh, coach ride to Barnaby's for crepe Suzette as only Barnaby prepares a crepe mm. Suzette. And after that, a liqueur back here by the fire in the lounge. No. Then? What? Uh, no. Oh, hey, boy. Who is this? Uh, me, number one for Mr. Paladin. Sorry, lady. No champagne. No Peacock. No creepy Suzettes. No liquors tonight. Wire come. You go. I know. You already packed. Wire? Here. Bad news, Mr. Paladin? Ah, uh, dear lady, forgive me. Hey, boy, send an answer to Tom Carter, Abilene. Just say, have gun, we'll travel. It's no surprise to anybody that the attractive and inexpensive new radios have proved popular. It's no surprise, that is, to anyone who listens to CBS radio. With so much in the way of music, comedy, drama, variety, and news coming your way every day on CBS Radio, more than one radio around the house is more than a convenience. It's almost a necessity for anyone who has a daily routine. The man of the house wants to come home to an attractive home and an attractive wife. But household chores in themselves are rarely inspirational. The smart homemaker is one who refuses to let her regular responsibilities get her down. She gets her work done every day, but she gets her entertainment in, too. She has a radio in the kitchen as well as the living room. Chances are she has a portable radio as well to follow her from one task to another around the house. She knows why the inexpensive new radios are so popular. And what's more, she knows the value of CBS radio, too. <laughs> Here you are. Your bag, your saddle, and your gear. This yeah. is your hotel right here. Now what's that? Oh, folks from the Wild West show hold up in town right now. <laughs> Most likely Ella West. Ella West, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the star attraction at Tomahawk Carter's Wild West show. It was kind of frisky at times. Uh, wouldn't go into the lobby by the front way if I was you. You wouldn't? Huh? Not with Ella cutting up before breakfast. <laughs> she just might take it into her mind to shoot them buttons off in that fancy vest you're wearing. <laughs> well, I'll chance it. <laughs> well, just, uh, just friendly advice, brother. I'd like a room, please. Uh, uh, what? A room. Oh. My name is Paladin. Oh, yeah, uh, well, just a minute. Uh, now, hold on, Ella. Fun's fun, but enough. Oh! Traitor, you can jump, too. Yeah, Ella! You speaking to me? No one else, Ninja. You don't need a room. Boys, he needs a cage. I might even buy you a lemon 
and squash later on, fancy pants. I'd prefer whiskey if I felt like drinking, which I don't. Say, you know who you're talking to? I do. I'm Ella West, and I can out-chew it, out-ride, and out-cuss any man here. I can out-drink you, I can out-chew you, and I can out-spit you. Possibly. Hey, Ella, here's Tracy Calvert. Tracy, where? Hi, Tracy. Now, you gonna let Ella take over your spot in the show? Huh? Morning, Ella. I didn't see you come in, Tracy. Why don't you answer Breed's question? Well, I... I just might take your spot. For two cents, I'd run you out of town, pony boy. Don't cut your price for me, Ella. Why, you... Break it up now, folks. Break it up. Drinks are on Tomahawk Carter. Everybody. I want to talk to you, Ella. You too, Tracy. That squabbling's got to stop. <laughs> you find me in the bar. Come on, Breed. Well, sure thing, Ella. Yeah, what was it this time, Tracy? The same thing it always is, Mr. Carter. Well, wrap me in buffalo hide, paladin. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Hello. Oh, you're a sight in well, them duds, a real sight. Tom. Yes, sir. Tracy, this Mr. Paladin. He knew me way back when I was making an honest living. <laughs> Tracy Calvert. I've seen you ride, Mr. Calvert, Laramie, Wyoming, 71, when you took the grand prize. I had a lucky day, Mr. Paladin. Uh, we got power to make. Well, I'll run along, Mr. Carter. Oh. No, you stick here, Tracy. I got bad trouble, and I want you to handle it, pal. Save your money, Tom. I never saw a man you couldn't handle. It ain't a man. That little gal I want gentle tonight. Tom, there's one wild thing man will never civilize. Woman. And if you mean that one, I'm afraid there'll be no pleasure in failing. That little gal in there happens to be Ella West. 24 years old, she's already more of a name than Calamity Jane, Cimarron, Rose, and Bell Star lumped together. I got her in my show, and I got damaged bills to prove it. And I'm going to lose my shirt even before I get my show together if something ain't done. You'll lose more when you get on the road. There's a million people want to see Ella West, Mr. Paladin. Darling of the frontier, heart of gold, yes, I've seen the write-up. She's fast with a gun, and she can ride like a Comanche. She has to be more than that. Ella West is a legend, Tom, a romantic illusion. Your audience will expect you to bring it to life. That's right. And instead, you'll produce a repugnant, grimy-faced, loud-mouthed little shrew. Well, I don't figure Ella's as bad as all that, Mr. Paladin. Oh, how long have you known her? She joined the show last month. Well, my question was, how long have you known her, Mr. Calvert? If you don't mind, I'll look in on the stock. Tracy and Ella was raised in the same part of the country. Learned shooting and riding together. Let him tame her. He seems to have a personal interest. Now, doggone it, we're old Tom, friends. Tom, you're talking about making a shell horse out of a wild, mean-tempered colt. Now, that takes more than taming. It means crushing its spirit, rebuilding it from the ground up. With a horse, the odds are ten to one for failure. Yeah, I guess I knew it wasn't any use all along. I could have made a fortune with her. That's why I want ten percent of the entire season's gait if I succeed. You ain't changed, have you? I hope that's a compliment. <laughs> it ain't never stealing to ask what you're worth. Of all leading filters, cigarettes, Kent filters best, Kent filters best. It makes good sense when you smoke Kent. Kent filters best. Of all of the brands of cigarettes, Kent tastes the best. Kent tastes the best. A richer taste than all the rest. Kent filters best. This here's Mr. Paladin, Ella. Oh, fancy pants. He come here to learn you some things. <laughs> you ain't gonna learn me nothing. Correct. My function is to teach. You will do the learning. I quit. Fair off, Tom. She just resigned. Wait just a blasted minute here. If anyone gets runned off, it's gonna be him. <laughs> Go along, Tom. I'll talk to you later. I'll be in the saloon. 
Now then, sit down, Miss West. <laughs> Mind if I smoke? No. Go ahead. Right. Try lighting that cigar now, fancy pants. That will be two deductions from your wages, the cost of the cigar and the bullet damage. You're kind of a cool one, Fancy Pants, but you ain't gonna make no lady out of me. First, you're not worth two cents to the show as a lady, and second, that would be impossible in the first place. Why, you... <laughs> you took my gun! It'll be less noisy that way. Now, sit down, please. Better? Although your audiences will expect you to be somewhat different from the average woman, they will expect certain fundamental manners. The essence of showmanship is to be different without being obnoxious. You're a lily-livered, fancy-talking dude. I'll run you out of town by morning. I believe you made the same ridiculous threat to Tracy Calvert. Him too. Tracy said anything to you about me, I'll kill him. <laughs> There's a ring of honesty in that threat, Miss West. However, he said nothing. I was merely speculating. Are we ready? If you've got something to learn me, I mean, teach me, then get on with it. But keep your nose pulled in, dude. Incorrect. I've got to eat, don't I? You don't reach with a fork and spear a slice of bread. You pick it up with now, your hand, and you never speak with your mouth full. Now, it's one thing to act homespun. It's quite another... Breed! To... You wearing a gun, dude. It's quite another to create revulsion. I suggest you confine your idiosyncrasies to calling the food vittles and complaining over the lack of buffalo I asked you a stuff. question, dude. I heard you. Because if you ain't got a gun, you better get one. I'm going to teach you some manners. Drop it. Ellie, you've been tied to this dude for two days. Now, you like it or something? I'm going along because there's money in it. You know an easier way, Breed? Yeah. All right, Ellen. You say the word when you need me. The breed seems to resent me almost as much as you do. I can handle breed for you, dude. No need, Miss West. When the time comes, I'll handle him myself. Remember, just pretend I'm a newspaper reporter. Get on with it. <clears throat> Another question, Miss. Tell us about your parents. My old man was a stinking drunk, and the old lady was worse. She was always... You are talking to reporters. Well, then let him make it up like they've been doing all along. <clears throat> Mention the homestead. Homestead? It was a stinking sow pen. You can ask Tracy Calvert. He'd... It was so bad you couldn't believe it. I'm sorry. You wouldn't feel so blasted up if you got rud up like that. You knew Tracy Calvert then? Oh, yeah. I knew him. We was kids then. His daddy had a nice spread of land. You should have seen Tracy's house. All painted inside and out with a fence around it. And Tracy's ma all starched up and nice. She gave me a dress once. My old lady traded it for some whiskey. No, oh, uh, Tracy would have laughed if he'd ever seen me wearing it anyhow. I think I understand. What? About you, Tracy Calvert. Do you? Yeah, maybe you do that. You're kind of a strange one yourself. I didn't know real men came in fancy pants. Well, what I mean is, we ain't doing so bad, are we? I don't know. He's sort of like you. Everything I wasn't, Tracy wasn't. Everything I didn't have, he did. When he was real little, his mom let me stay one night. She come in and pulled the cover up and kissed me. I was 16 and he was 18 when they was going to move away. Maybe he wasn't grown up yet, but I was. I was growed up plenty. I didn't ask Tracy to marry me. Just take me with him. I'd do anything if he would. He could cut me up into little pieces if he wanted to. Just take me. I never said the same thing since, but I'm saying it to you. I, I ain't what folks think. No man's never touched me. You take me with you when you go back to San Francisco. I wouldn't be afraid with you. Maybe just kiss my cheek and say something nice. I don't want to be in no show, printed in no paper. I, I just want somebody to know I'm alive. Please. No. What's the matter? Look at yourself. You're still that grimy 16-year-old kid pretending she's a man. You don't compete with women because you're afraid to. Paladin. Find a man who wants the smell of the stables and ask him to take you away. <laughs> Breed wants me. Then you and Mr. Breed deserve each other. And he can have me. Just as soon as he kills you! Do you 
see speed laws and other regulations as restrictive, or do you look upon them as protective? When a police officer writes a summons for traffic violations, do you see him as an enemy or a friend? Your life may depend on your attitudes. Statistics clearly indicate that where laws are obeyed, deaths go down. It's no secret that emotional immaturity is the major factor in our accident rate. How else but childish can you describe the notion that breaking a traffic regulation is a way of getting away with something? What could be more infantile than believing one can prove his superiority by ignoring a stoplight? Unfortunately, too many drivers on the road subscribe to that kind of emotional outlook. The result is tragic. Almost 85% of all traffic accidents in America are caused by careless, childish driving. We hope you know our traffic laws and the people who enforce them are there to help save your life. He's a nasty one, Mr. Paladin. Come along if you like. Good afternoon, Ella. I heard you wanted to see me, Mr. Breed. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't recognize you first, wearing them big boys' clothes. <laughs> You're carrying your play acting too far this time, Ella. Play acting? I've shot men for less. That's kid talking. We aren't kids anymore. Shut up, Tracy! You hear the lady, Tracy. Shut up and get out. Me and Fancy Pants gonna settle something. I changed my mind, Breed. I don't want no killing. Uh-uh, honey, we made a bargain. You're gonna keep it all the way. Tracy, take her to one side. You, barkeep, pour five shots and set them up in the line. Yes, sir. What's this? I promised Tom Carter I'd avoid a gunfight if possible. <laughs> oh, you ain't got no choice, Fancy Pants. All poured? Yes, sir. Good. <laughs> Now then, Mr. Breed. I have one bullet left. Please, draw whenever you're ready. Well, I... Are you going to draw? But I didn't... But if you aren't going to draw, I suggest that you find Tom Carter, hand in your resignation, and start traveling. Now. Lessons continue at 7, Miss West, in my room. Please be on time. Well. I got myself some female clothes. Cost more than genuine buckskin. I took a bath. Two. Well, come in. Tracy Calvert's right. If I ain't a woman, I ain't nothing. I can go if you want me to. You look very nice, Miss Well, You don't have to say that. It happens to be true. You come off surprisingly womanly in a dress. The store sold me a lot of lashings and cross ropes to go underneath. It is and not I... considered good taste to discuss undergarments. I'm sorry. The only thing that threw me was my top notch is worse than platinum cap on his tail. I still hate you. Kind of. Yeah, you're smiling. Go ahead. I don't blame you. I'm clumsy and I talk ignorant. and I guess a few yards of silk don't help the likes of me much. Wise man judges by the lady's smile. I think I felt better when you was whopping my knuckles and telling me not to spear my bread. Golly, that's the first nice thing you said to me. Dealing with a woman now. You're dealing with a shaky one. You just being kind to me. A woman needs kindness only when she has no virtues, Ella. I. I wouldn't want you to say anything out of pity. Pity isn't included in the course. Come in. Mr. Paladin, I would. Holy lovely jumping toads. Oh, Tracy. Why, Ella, you. Well, uh, I. Gosh. What's the matter, Tracy? Well, Ella, I've never seen you in... I mean, your hair, your eyes, Ella. You, you're a lady, Ella. Am I, 
Tracy. You sure are, and I'll kill a man who says you ain't. I'm sorry for what I said to you all about not being a lady, but doggone it, you've changed. She changed for you, Mr. Calvin. Huh? She'll tell you herself in time, but she'd like it very much if you just kept that silly look on your face and kept thinking of her as a lady. Oh, I will, Ella. I swear I will, honest. <laughs> What'd I do wrong? D did I offend you? No, Tracy. No, dear, dear Tracy. Now, Ella, don't cry. I... Mr. Paladin, wh what do I do now? Take your lady in your arms, Mr. Kelvin, and never let her go. Aveline Town, Mr. Paladin. In Aveline Town, things are going smoothly. And uh, how are things here in San Francisco? Smoothly. Specifically, the young lady I never dined with, is she still registered here? Oh, yes. Ah. Uh, then will you please take her this note and tell her I'm back? I do it, but her, her husband no like. Her husband? Yeah. She get married two days ago. Ah, me. But the uh, Spanish dancer registered today. Very nice. Oh, oh, you catch him up for dinner, eh? The Spanish dancer? Oh, boy. Uh, hey, boy, take that note up to the Spanish dancer with my compliments. Same note? <laughs> Same note. <laughs> no one we know of approves of wasting money. In spite of that, however, we Americans are often guilty of wasting our money by the uses we make of our government facilities. Take the operation of the post office, for example. Mostly out of habit, many offices and individuals post outgoing mail at the end of the day. In so doing, they leave post office employees with too little work to do at other times of the day. In addition, we forget to include zone numbers as part of the address. In both ways, we're slowing down the entire system for delivering mail and adding to the cost of our postal operation. The problem is simple enough to solve. Start solving it tomorrow. If you'll arrange to post letters and packages earlier in the day and include zone numbers on the return address as well as the outgoing address, you'll help our post office operate more efficiently for you and at less cost, too. Remember, for faster, more economical service, mail early in the day and include zone numbers. <laughs> Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Gene Roddenberry and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Sam Edwards, Harry Bartell, Lawrence Dotkin, Lynn Allen, and Barney Phillips. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.